thank you so much for joining me on another episode of the Janine Hernandez TV show. Today, I have the privilege and the honor of having Miss Michelle Person on the show with us today. She is the founder of Just Like Me Books. She is an author, a speaker, motivator. She's doing it all. So thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. Girl, I am so excited to interview you because I, I saw your Instagram and your Facebook and I'm like, she is killing it. She's doing a lot. <laughs> So tell our listeners and our viewers a little bit about yourself. Oh, no problem. So I am a educator who fell into education and has had the most horrible time getting out. I'm just, I've accepted it. I'm an educator for life. So I've been uh, <laughs> teaching for, teaching for, I taught for 12 years and I've been um, a principal for the last eight. Um, and uh, in, in that process, I've started, I started uh, Just Like Me books in response to the lack of diverse characters that I saw in children's literature. Um, and being an educator, um, I realized that kids read for different reasons. Some kids read because they just want to enjoy and escape. Some kids, you know, read because they want to learn. Some kids read for, everybody reads for a different reason. So I have two series, the Nathaniel English series, which is my series that the educator in me is determined to make sure that stories that honestly, even as a principal, I don't get to share uh, a lot of times because a lot of stories don't make it to a school's curriculum. So the purpose of the Nathaniel English books is to highlight figures, people, events that don't necessarily make it into your normal school curriculum. Um, the purpose of Kind of the Daddy Man, it's just a fun series about a little girl and the adventures she has with her dad. Um, and, and just, it's a fun way to introduce kids to reading. Um, and it, it, it's super cute, you know, nothing, nothing heavy. Um, so that's where, that's, that's who I am right now. I'm an educator. I'm the founder of Just Like Me Books, uh, bestseller of uh, Nathaniel English and Leaders of the Revolution, um, and, um, you know, pushing forward and moving the brand right now. Wow. That's all I have to say is, wow. I'm, I'm just, I'm like, oh, wait, she's a principal and you, you're doing this on the side as well. How do you balance, like, work-life balance? Because I can assume that being a principal is a br pretty big job. It, it really is. And, and right now, like I, I, it's really getting hard to balance the two. Um, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do the balance, but um, it, it really is. Um, I, I mean, a really tight schedule. Talk about, I know they say people in the military, you know, they have a very regimented schedule. You would not like, I have a notebook. I keep my notebook. If you make it into my notebook, you will get addressed. And, you know, but if, if, if I were having a conversation and you don't see me write something down, you can forget it. It's probably not going to be able to happen. It's not going to make it into my regimented schedule, but just a very, very specific schedule of like who, when, where, what, how, and um, just making sure to follow it. You know, that's, that's pretty much it. That's my secret. Wow. Wow. A notebook. Yep. That's my secret. <laughs> the secret notebook. Um, okay, so so you have the uh, Kai and Daddy Man series. That was the first uh, first set of books that you wrote. What inspired right. you to write those? So they, it's funny when I tell this story. It honestly started off all as a gift. I wrote a gift for my daughter's father, um, and uh, he was it was his first child, and he was really concerned that you know at the time we lived um, uh, about three hours apart. So he was concerned that you know she's not even gonna know who I am. You know we're you know it's gonna be so hard. She, you know, and I was like, and I, I told him several times like it really won't matter. Like you're her daddy. She's gonna love you. It's gonna be great. Um, and so, and it's exactly what happened. She's a daddy's girl. It's awesome. Um, and, um, you know, so I wrote the book to kind of make him feel better about the relationship, the impending relationship between himself and his daughter. And uh, my brother-in-law is a librarian and I showed it to my brother-in-law and he was like, oh my gosh, he's like, I'm so glad you wrote that book. He said, because there's so many, there's so few books with characters of color. This is amazing. And I have to admit, even as a, a principal and as a, um, as a principal and as a, a teacher and as an avid reader, it, it took me a minute when he's my brother-in-law, the comment I'm about to share, he said, well, that comment. And, um, and I reflected on the books that I liked when I was a, a young girl. I loved the Babysitter's Club, Sweet Valley Twins, um, all of those books. So I, I had all of them. I read them all. And I really had to go back and think. And there were no black characters you know there was one in the babysitter's club and she was a junior babysitter she didn't even get the title of like you know a full-fledged babysitter uh sweet Val i loved sweet valley twins and sweet valley high 
they like have like a recurring friend who would like pass through, you know, nobody that stayed throughout the the, the mm -hmm. entire series. So as I really sat down and reflected and I thought, you know, I, I need to do something. Like I'm an educator, I'm in a position of power, I have the ability to do something. Um, and that's where Just Like Me came from. The desire, once I realized how big of a problem it was, um, you know, I, I recognized that I needed to do something about it. You know, if not me, then who? So yeah. that's where Just Like Me came from. If not me, then who? That is powerful because you saw a yeah. need and you made it happen. Yeah. Um, do mm -hmm. your your school, the school that you're in, are you able to have your book there in the library? Like, do the kids read it, et cetera? So I generally find that it's easier sometimes to keep my my uh, my my company and my uh, and my school life separate because what happens sometimes is honestly like people will say, oh my gosh, we're so happy for you. We're so proud for you. Um, you know, like go out there, get it girl, you know, and then the minute um, a deadline gets missed <laughs> or the minute that, you know, um, something that they wanted in the building gets missed, it's, well, you know, she, you know, she wasn't able to do that because she was probably doing something else. Mm -hmm. And it's like, eh, like, I, I don't want, I don't ever call into question my integrity or my ability, you know, I'm human, things happen. So I've, I've honestly found that it's, um, it's easier if I keep the two separate. Um, now, my colleagues, people that I work with, they definitely know, you know, people like people in like same, the same districts as yeah. me and things like that. Um, definitely. They're also very supportive, um, you know, but in my actual buildings, usually now if I leave a building and I go someplace else, I share and people are so super supportive, but in that space, being a principal is a very, it's a very weird position. Um, and, and so there's a lot of, a lot of behind the scenes stuff that goes involved. And so I try to make sure that that stuff, one they're both separate I try to keep them separate I definitely can relate to that when I was working in in the corporate America life I was a, in human resources so I did share a little bit that I was an author but then there's that gray area eventually where people are like well what are you doing on your lunch break or exactly did you miss, did you miss exactly. that deadline because you were doing you know and it's like eh, no okay forget were it. you out <laughs> yesterday because you were promoting your book like I, I don't need those type of problems I don't <laughs> Maybe one day in this world we'll be able to, you know, have that ability to be able to have our true passions yeah. and also our corporate life or, or teacher life, et cetera, our nine to right. five. So mm -hmm. hopefully one day. But for now, I, I totally agree. Keep it separate. <laughs> yeah. So I want to shift a little bit to the Just Like Me brand. Is that a movement? Is that the name of your company? Talk to us a little bit about that and how that got started. So just like me, it, it, it literally started because I initially thought that I was just going to be about the books. But when I say that it is turning into a movement, it, it's it's more now about making sure that there are all forms of curriculum, educational matter where kids can say that looks like me or not, maybe not. It looks like me, but. I, that that feels like me. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is, um, as I, as I'm going through, you know, as my, my teaching career, I'm reflecting and I'm doing this, and, and and you know, you always reflect and then you try to grow. Um, I'm realizing all the incidents over the years where, um, not only in the area of literature, is there a need for culturally responsive teaching. And, you know, prior to just like me books, I, you know, I worked at a, a place where, um, you know, math is always a really hard subject. Kids don't like it. Um, and part of the problem is they can't relate to it. So I worked at a, a school many years ago, love them. They're a nationally known charter school called KIPP Knowledge is Power uh, Program. And I worked at two different KIPP schools. And there's a way in which at KIPP we introduce math. Um, and it's all through song. Everything has a song and a story. When you're dealing with, you know, black and brown kids, you know, and, and kids in general, because everybody, the first way you learn, the first song you learn when you're a little kid is the ABC song. Everybody learns the ABC, and you learn it that way because there is something about music. There's something about music that when you, when you sing something, you remember it. Mm -hmm. And and so everything we do with math, we did with math was put to music. And uh, when I left that school, I um, I took that with me. So like in the classroom, and and I mean, there's kids all over the different cities that I've been in. If I can get a hold of a third grader for like 20 minutes, I'm gonna teach them how to multiply in five minutes using a song I taught them. Um, but and it, it's funny because years later, I will meet my, my one of my most favorite stories as I was in the checkout at Target. And one of my students that I had in eighth grade, uh, when they were in second grade, they're now clearly old enough to work at Target. 
And they said, oh my God, this person. And the next thing they did was start singing the song I taught them when they were in second grade. So, I mean, this girl was, you know, grown and still remembers that song. And then the next thing she said was, yeah, everybody else didn't like math. She's like, but I always liked math because of you. Um, and personally, I hate math. So the idea that, you know, that, that when you are able to present information to a child in a way in which they can relate to it, it creates a deeper love and understanding is where Just Like Me Books is heading. Um, and, and so where we are right now is I'm going to revisit um, that mathematics program that I that that I've done many many for many many years now and like and and try and really push it out there mainstream. Um, our our right now our, our newest um, endeavor is called uh, Meanwhile in Africa, and it's a supplemental social studies curriculum that mm -hmm. tells the history of people of, of not even just African Americans or Black people. It tells the history of the world through the lens of historical accuracy which is that all life started in Africa. And mm -hmm. if you can frame things properly, children will be engaged and they will they will want to learn. And so mm -hmm. that's where the brand is heading. It's like the shift is coming from. It's not right now the title that we're, we're just like me books, but we are definitely in, in, the, in the process of moving out of just being about books and being about just like me education in general, you yeah. know, ed education where children can see themselves in whatever it is that they're learning. You're growing. The business is growing, is expanding. And as yes. with anything, it's okay for things to evolve and change, you know? So yes. it's, it's really good that you started with books, but it's expanding into something bigger. And it's going to mm -hmm. be even bigger than what it is right now. So that's super yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you, so on your Instagram, you have like author tips or just tips in general for <laughs> books, right? You have those short mm -hmm. clips. Tell us a little bit about that. I thought those were awesome. Oh, thank you. So uh, you know, I try to make sure that when people are on the page and, you know, I'm giving them content that they can use. One of the things that I, I will tell as a, an administrator, um, you know, I, and, and what my teachers have told me is that they, they love about my leadership style is I want to give it to you easy. I want to give it to you clear. And I want to give it to you in a way in which you can immediately take it and implement it in your classroom so that you can see results. So the point of the, the book tips is parents are, you know, kids are struggling, especially now you know, with everything that's going on and trying to go to school virtually. And, and even when parents are not trying to go to school virtually, kids are struggling. The, the state of public education, um, in part, especially in urban districts, it, it, I mean, it's not great. And this is from an educator who has spent the last 20 years in public education. Um, and so parents, they want to do right by their kids. They want to support the teachers. Um, they just don't know how. And they also, because they are working parents with jobs and kids, they also don't have a 30 minutes every day to sit down and, and do a program or, um, or, or learn some new um, strategy or anything like that. Um, so I try to give uh, parents really bite-sized pieces of information and even new teachers. I've, I've heard a lot of new teachers really like the tips because they can take them and implement them in their classroom. You would be amazed at what a new teacher comes out and just does not know. Like you spend all that money and to get a degree that says that we taught you how to teach and they come out and they know not a lot. Yeah. Uh, and, and that doesn't mean that they can't be taught and it doesn't mean that um, that they're not that, that they're not committed to their craft. They just don't know what they don't know yet. And so those, those little bite-sized videos that you're referencing are my effort to give people little pieces, the little chunks that they can take, digest, reflect on and implement immediately and see results. So that's what those are about. And, and, and they've been really, they've been responded. People have responded to them really well. I enjoyed them. I watched a couple of them and I'm like, okay, I love your energy. I love the information, the value that you're bringing. It's super, super dope what you're doing. So thanks for Thank that. Thank you. Who, who would you say is your ideal reader? My ideal reader, like the perfect, just like me book reader. Mm-hmm. So the perfect Just Like Me book reader, I think, is a, a reader who's new, who's just learning. Um, and and they, 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 everything is, you know, kind of like Kai. You know, everything's an adventure and they, and they just want to soak everything up and soak everything in. And, and that's the best place or the best time to get a reader because when they've not developed those negative patterns, when they've not, you know, developed negative attitudes about what reading is or what reading should be, you know, they're just filled with wonder and they just want to know. And the, the, the purpose of Just Like Me books and the at, on the Just Like Me book site, um, you'll find not just my books, because again, I've only written five 
And mm -hmm. I write two very specific types of books. I write for entertainment, for Kyle the Daddy Man, and I write to, uh, to educate with Nathaniel English. But there are so many great uh, books out there by authors um, with, who use uh, diverse characters and, and teach social emotional learning and empathy and you know sh and are telling diverse stories. So there's the Just Like Me books and then there are Just Like Me picks. Mm -hmm. And um, on the Just Like Me pick section, you can go on and see books by other authors who also are doing the same work, like telling the same stories, um, you know, to, to continue this movement, this work. And our best type of reader is a reader who is just who is completely new, uh, and, and, and is a, and can be inundated with all the different types of characters and stories and genres. Um, that's our that's our ideal reader. So probably five to eight year olds are yeah. are just the best. Oh, that's awesome! Tell us, uh, tell our listeners and our viewers what's next. What's next for you? What's next for Just Like Me books? What do you see for the next five ten years? Well, this year in particular, I mean, I, we are poised right now to really explode. And, and that's really what we're doing this year. Right now, we are, like I said, we are working on the third Kai and the Daddy Man book. It's Kai and the Daddy Man Do the Holidays. And that's going to mm -hmm. be out probably, if not, if not by May, probably by June. Um, you know, Kai and the Daddy Man Do the Holidays. And, and the curriculum, the, the Meanwhile in Africa curriculum, that is really about to blow up. We, we are in beta testing right now for that um, and inviting people to come and give their feedbacks and comments so that we can review and make changes before we publicly go to market. Um, but we are, and it's a, again, a supplemental curriculum for kids in grades K through five um, and where they can, you know, that you can still, I'm not saying it all, like you can still, the the current public education system, there's a lot wrong with it and we can have a whole nother show about that. Mm -hmm. But everything's not wrong with it. You can still pick, you, you're, there's still things you can learn and, and get from it, but there's also things that, you know, get skipped over and could be added. And that's why I say it's a supplement. It, it's a way in which to supplement what's missing in, in a lot of social studies teaching right now. But that really is, is, is our focus. We're about to really focus on that. And that's about to really blow up. We've gotten some really good feedback. People yeah. are hungry for it. Like they, they kid, parents don't know where to go to find information that's that their kids that's not over their kids' heads. Like there's a lot of places that are like, oh, we can teach your kids this, but you gotta also remember the, the development of a kid. You can't speak to a, a five year old the same way you speak to a 13 yep. year old. Um, and so you gotta put you gotta put the the content together just right. And that I've not found a program that has done that yet. And that's where we come in. So I that's know. really where that's really where we're we're going right now. We're moving towards that, and then we're re like I said, we're, we're going to revisit um, our math program. And you know, it was something that was on the shelf, and you know, not we hadn't done anything with it in a really long time. But I think we're going to dust it off and bring it back. And then, like in those 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 tidbits of those videos that you see, where we want to offer, you know, quick but very informative and effective webinars for parents. Um, and educators so that they can grab some information, take it and go back right away and implement it. So that there's is, a lot on the horizon right now. That's good because I, I know for me, I have a 12 year old going on 13 and there are certain mm -hmm. things that I want to teach him, but I, I personally don't know the real information and it's right. hard to find information for his age, you know? Yeah. And so I'm constantly like trying to like ask around, like, where can I find this information? Because they have mm -hmm. it for adults, but he's not going to understand. So yeah. it's similar yeah. with, you know, with five-year-olds. So that's super, super amazing that you're doing that amazing work. One last question I wanted to ask you, what would you tell someone or a kid or a teenager that wants to write a book, but might be afraid to do so? Just do it. Nike. It. I mean, like you can't, I mean, like you just, you just do it. You, it is, don't think that it's not good enough because you can always go back and rewrite it. Um, that's why God made erasers and backspace buttons. Um, you know, the, the, the goal is just for you to get that story out there. It doesn't matter if you can't spell the words right. It doesn't matter if, you know, it doesn't make any sense to anyone but you. Just do it. Like that's the, because once you do it, you go back and you'll look at it and you'll fix it. And, and you'll feel like, you're like, ah, I saw, you know, I, I said this, maybe I want to do it this way or I don't like that character. I'm going to take it out. But if you never get it on paper in the first place, you'll never get to that next step. So my advice to anybody who who is looking to write or wants to write or thinking about writing, just do it. Just got to do it.
That's great advice. And I always feel, I feel the same way myself. I'm like, I don't know that I'm the best writer, but that's why we have editors. We have people that can yes. edit and do the grammar for us and fix it up. <laughs> people so. always ask me, they're like, well, how did you do it? Did you draw the pictures? No. Have you seen my, my I draw stick people. I can't draw. I, people. I found somebody <laughs> to draw for me. Like, like no, just, just like, do it. I love that. Where can our viewers and our listeners uh, reach you? Would it be Instagram, Facebook? What's the best way to contact you? I am on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on, um, I'm also on Twitter. My Twitter, I don't do Twitter a whole lot, but on Twitter and um, and Facebook, it's uh, just, it's read just like me, uh, at read just like me on both of those platforms. On Instagram, it's at just like me books. And on LinkedIn, it's just my name, Michelle Person. Um, so you can find me on any of those platforms. The website is www read just like me.com that's www.readjustlikeme.com and you can shoot an email to me there's a contact uh, page there you can shoot an email there you can shoot an email like we've been communicating through insta um you know on the dm so you can do you can uh, contact me there but those are the are the best ways to, to reach out perfect any last minute words you want to leave our listeners and viewers with um just i i any author out there or any kid out there who's considering writing a book or wants to write a book or a, a grown-up who wants to write a book like I said it's not if I can do it you can do it um parents um if you are looking for um some content that is culturally relevant for your kids follow us you know we like we, we have a lot of stuff coming out and you know right now you maybe you're not looking for books in this moment but maybe your kid really struggles in math or maybe your kid is really having a difficult time relating to, you know, the content that they're teaching in school and you're mad because it's not accurate. It's not, it's not what you want to teach, but they're going to be tested on it, but you still want to be able to show them what was re what really happened. I, I would say, make sure you're following us, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Facebook, um, because we're about to start pushing out some products that I think that you guys will really enjoy and that the kids will really get a lot out of. Love it. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. I want to thank you for being a part of the Janine Hernandez TV show. I truly, no truly problem. appreciate you. Um, and guys, just with anything, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, share with your friends, do all of that amazing stuff that you guys do. And make sure to follow Michelle on her uh, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Reach out to her if you guys need to. Uh, but we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys.